It's great to bring God's word to us all today. And I'm excited to kick off a brand new series for the Living Hope family, Walking in Faith, Not Fear. If there was one word or phrase that was word or phrase of the year for 2019, it was climate emergency, climate emergency. Other previous years, the key word has been toxic, I think in 2019, or selfie, post-truth, and fake news. But for 2020, what do you think the word of the year or phrase of the year will be? I was thinking about that this week. It will be social distancing or corona or self-isolation. But the truth is fear is actually at the root of all of those words right across the world. Because fear is what is dominating so many conversations. And today I want to speak about walking in faith, not fear. Listen to what the Word of God says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and importantly, a sound mind. What a gift that God gives to us. Love, power, and a sound mind. Jesus himself faced many storms and many troubled times. But if you read the Gospels closely, you'll discover that Jesus was able to position himself during every storm for peace. Matthew 8, 24, And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he, that is Jesus, was asleep. You know, currently we are all facing storms. For some of it, it might feel like an earthquake. The very foundations of our lives and worlds are being shaken. The world is being shaken. Our lives are being shaken. And so it's understandable at times like this that fear does be something that we are battling. That anxiety and stress, things like that come to the surface. And so what I want to share this morning is how to live at peace during troubled times. There are four things that I believe we need to minimize. And then there are four other things that we need to maximize. What do we need to minimize? Well, I think firstly we need to minimize the news. Now normally I'm a news junkie. I'm listening to news all the time. But I firmly believe that at this moment in time all I need to be listening to is the government daily update from our politicians and from our healthcare professionals. Anything else that I'm listening to actually starts to mess with my mind. Is that what it's doing for you? Yeah. I'm sure it is. So I think, first of all, we need to minimize the news. And then secondly, we need to minimize social media. Again, I'm a social media junkie, but unfortunately, social media is full of fake news, attacks, uh, rumor. You know, bad news, unfortunately, seems to travel more quickly than good news. So minimize social media. And then thirdly, I would say minimize media in general. Ultimately, media needs to sell advertising space. Ultimately. And so, unfortunately, you know, if you get your head into everything that the media is saying and writing, your head will be spinning. So let me encourage you, minimize the media. I was watching again, why did I do it? Why was I, why did I do it? Piers Morgan again. He may say some good things at times, but what all he wants to do in British TV in the mornings is stir up controversy. That is not good for my peace of mind. That is not good for anxiety. Minimize the media. And then fourthly, minimize negative people. You all know that there are different types of people. And I've said this a hundred times before, and I make no excuse in saying it again. Some people are purifiers. Other people are polluters. Some people, you get into their company and the air lightens and everything changes and you feel so much better. Other people, you get into their company and they are polluters. They're belching out all sorts of toxic things. Some people, 
will take you to the balcony. Other people will take you to the basement. It's like getting into a lift or an elevator. They press the letter B. Some people will take you to the basement. All it is is negative. It's dark. It's hopeless. It is despair. Other people, they'll take you to the balcony. They will take you higher. They will give you a new perspective on life and this situation and the troubles of this world. I've said it many times and people make fun of me for saying it, but I often say that as a pastor, I would never walk away from a negative person. I run Run for your life. Run for us. Do you get it? Yeah, keep away. Minimize negative people speaking into your life. That's what you need to minimize. The news, uh, social media, media in general, and negative people. But how do we live at peace in troubled times? What do we need to maximize? Okay, well, firstly, we need to maximize Worship at home. Worship at home. We're going to be home almost 24 hours a day. Who or what is setting the spiritual temperature in your home at the moment? Is it speculation? Is it Netflix? Is it uh, the news? The charts? The radio? Is it Facebook articles? Who or what is setting the spiritual climate? In your home at the moment, to live at peace, we need to maximize sung worship. Listen to what the psalmist says, Psalm 22 and verse 3. But you are holy, O thou, O you who inhabits the praises of your people. Now we know that God is omnipresent, God is everywhere. Then when we begin to follow Jesus, Romans tells us those who belong to Christ have the Spirit of Christ. So we have the inner presence of God. But thirdly, there is God's manifest presence. Yes, God is everywhere. God dwells in us as we follow Jesus. But thirdly, there is God's manifest presence and you and I all know from experience that there are times when it's like oh my goodness like God is here God is among us everything is changing and the Bible says actually that God God's manifest presence inhabits the praises of his people God is attracted to households to homes and families who are worshipping. And when I say that God inhabits the praises of his people, I'm not just simply saying that a, that a peaceful atmosphere descends, and that is true, that a peaceful atmosphere will descend on your house rather than having talk radio on in the background. No, it's more than that. God's presence manifests in our homes, in our living rooms, in our bedrooms when we come before him in sung worship. Let me remind you of a story from the Old Testament. It's the story of the first king of Israel, King Saul, and the shepherd boy, King David. King Saul was being tormented. He was being robbed of his peace. And so let me read to you from 1 Samuel 16, 23. And so it was, whenever the spirit which God had allowed came upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Listen carefully. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. When David started to worship in Saul's home, everything changed. Now, it's not the power of music, but the power of the presence of God, which was ushered in as David started to worship. Peace descended. There was deliverance. Literally, there was sanity. 
And you and I can provide that for our homes if we will maximize worship. I think particularly sung worship in our homes. In the morning, I'll shout across the kitchen, Alexa, play Christian worship songs. And Alexa lines them up. You'll have your own version wherever you live. But there's YouTube and there's CD and your smartphone. Choose. Change the environment. Don't simply just change the atmosphere with music, but change the whole environment as God manifests his presence as you worship. So keep off the news, except for that daily update. Keep praise. Your praise will forever be on my lips. And you will be absolutely amazed at the difference in your homes as God inhabits the praises of his people. Praise him, welcome him, worship him, and adore him. And learn how to live with peace, the peace of God in these troubled times. Okay, secondly, maximize what? Maximize feeding on the scriptures. We have never had so much time at hand to read. Reading is so good at all ages, but this is not a time to devour every single Stephen King novel. In fact, it's never a time to devour Stephen King novels. This is a time to devour the Word of God. Listen to what Isaiah says, Isaiah 26 and verse 3. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stead on you because he trusts in you. Now, many of us are clearly feeling anxious and worried, and fearful, and even stressed. But let me give you a little bit of insight. The truth is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your feelings. Jonathan, you're saying, like, are you mad? I mean, you don't know what I'm feeling at the moment. No, listen carefully. There's nothing wrong with your feelings. Our feelings are merely helping us to experience what's going on in here. What we are thinking. They are windows to what's going on in our minds. And so the key to living at peace isn't to fight our feelings. The key to living at peace is to change what you're thinking, change what's going on in our minds. The truth of Scripture is that there are over 7,000 promises that God has in his word in order for us to feel secure as sons and daughters of God. Listen to what Jesus says, John 17 and 17. This is the final discourse he's having with the disciples. Their hearts are troubled. And he says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word. Your word is truth. The scriptures, I would put it this way, are the original antivirus. Do you know antivirus software like Norton and McAfee, etc.? That antivirus software, well, it searches out and it removes the virus which is impacting your computer's health, maybe even the operating system and the overall health of the computer. That's what antivirus software does. That's what the scripture does in our minds. And actually, it's more than removing the lies. Yes, the scripture removes the lies, but it also replaces the lies with the truth. Have you got that? Here's some truth today. I will never leave you nor forsake you, says the Lord. Do you notice how your feelings are already responding? Let me say it again. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Here's another bit of truth. My God will supply all your needs. Why don't you say that with me? My God will supply all your needs. Do you sense your feelings starting to change? Here's another bit of truth from the book of Romans. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither height nor depth, angel, angels, principalities, powers, anything else in all creation. 
will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Do you sense your feelings starting to change as worry is taken out, as the viruses are being removed, and the truth comes in, and the truth sets us free? How did Jesus respond to his most troubled times? Do you remember when he started his ministry and absolutely all hell was leashed against him, was released against him? Remember that? And he's in the wilderness and Satan is tempting him and testing him for 40 days and, and 40 nights. How did he fight it? Well, he didn't fight his feelings. He declared from his lips the scriptures. And if the Son of God needed to fill his mind with the Word of God in order to be at peace in those troubled times, how much more is it upon you and me today to fill our minds, to maximize our minds with God's Word? I want to take a few moments to help you get a grasp on the Bible. I've got my big Bible here. It's an ESV, English Standard Version. I think Robert gave me this Bible. The print is so small, I can't see it anymore. I'm 52. Can you believe it? Yeah. So how do you get a grasp on, on the Bible? How do you get a firm grasp on the Bible? Well, first of all, well, I'm starting here. Uh, hear God's word. That's where we start. We need to hear God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the book of Romans says. So I would encourage you, get the version app downloaded and every day you can listen free of charge to the Bible being read to you. Listen to these sermons. Listen to podcasts. That's how we start off. But I, you know, I haven't got, got a very great grasp of the Bible yet. So I'm going to take another finger to it. Read God's word. I'm getting a better grasp. Read God's word. Book of Revelation says, if you read the words of this prophecy, you'll be blessed. So every day, get a Bible reading plan. Again, version is very good for that. version Bible app. That is excellent. Many types of reading pl plans. Read systematically every day and you start to get a grasp of God's Word and get it into your mind. Then study. I'm getting a more firm grasp here. I've got three fingers on it. Yeah, study God's Word. Dig deeper. Use dictionaries and concordances and study deeper. In Acts, the book of Acts, I think it's Acts chapter 18, um, we read of people who were studying God's word and they, they weren't going to be tossed back and forth by every wind of doctrine. So when that crazy guy, when the other crazy guy comes on uh, the internet and says, listen to my message and he's preaching crazy messages, you'll be able to discern what really is of God and what is of man. And then fourthly, I'm going to get a better grip now on things. Memorize God's word. Memorize God's word. When Jesus was facing some of his biggest battles, he didn't have scrolls in his arms. He had memorized God's word. Satan and the troubles aren't going to come when you have the open Bible in front of you. No, the troubles are going to close when the Bible's in your study. So you need to have the word in your mind in order to be able to confess it to defeat your problems. I remember when I was 17 year old, the man who was discipling me, who now is a pastor in Australia, David Besant, he got me to memorize God's word. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. You see, when the troubles come, when the temptations come, no, I can declare God's word. I can defeat the enemy. God uh, is in me. God will not allow more to be put upon me. And God will always provide a way out to these common problems, common temptations, common solutions that God has. So um, hear God's word, read God's word, yeah, study God's word. Memorize God's Word. Ah, I'm, I'm getting a good grasp in the Bible now. Meditate upon God's Word. Now, what about that word meditate? There's a huge difference between Christian med meditation and Eastern meditation. In Eastern meditation, it's about emptying yourself. That is not good. When you're emptying yourself, what is going to fill you? You're going to get in trouble. You do not empty yourself. In Christian meditation, you're filling yourself with God's word. You're chewing over God's word. The dairy cows, I think, have four stomachs. When they eat the grass, they chew on it. They ruminate, ruminate on it four times. 
passing it from stomach to stomach. That's what we need to do with God's word. Let me think. Here's a scripture. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. How would you meditate upon that? I will go very quickly for the sake of time, but you take it more slowly. I, yes, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's how you meditate on God's word. Now, I've done it very quickly, but keep chewing over God's word, ruminating over God's word. Hear, read, study, memorize, meditate, and then we apply God's word. You're do, you, you'll be blessed, Jesus said, if you do these things, if you do these things. Maximize feeding on God's word. Feed on the scriptures. What did Jesus say? Man does not live by bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let's move on quickly. What else do we need to maximize? Well, maximize in connecting with life giving people. Every time you hear this phrase, social distancing, think distant socializing, right? Every time you hear the phrase, social distancing, think distant socializing. Okay, you can still fellowship from a distance. I know it's it's difficult and it's not exactly what the Lord had in mind, but it's what we need to do at this season. But be sure to keep fellowshipping, even if it's online, with followers of Jesus. You know, there, are, as I said before, there are many people who aren't purifiers. They are polluters. There are many people who love to make a drama every single day out of a crisis. Let me ask you a serious question. Who are you running with? Who are you running with? You know, last year, for the first time ever, a man, a human being, ran the marathon in under two hours. Eliud Kipchoge this is, is the man's name. But you know what? He did not run that marathon in under two hours by himself. No, he didn't. He had 41 other people who at five kilometer intervals ran with them and set the pace so that he was a record breaker, so that he was a world champion. That's how you rub sub run, sorry, sub two hours. He had people all around him to make that record possible. Well, let me ask you, what type of brothers and sisters are you running with? Are you listening to? Are you sharing life with, even if it is online, day by day? Who are the biggest influencers in your life personally? What are their personal lives like? What are their marriages like? What are their families and kids and character like? Listen to what the psalmist says. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And here we have that again. And on that law, he meditates day and night. There is a regression in Psalm 1 from walking to standing to sitting. If you hang out with the wrong people, if you let the wrong people influence you, you are going to be in trouble. Your walk will come to an end and you'll be sitting on your bottom. Someone once said, you can't soar with the eagles while you're running with the chickens or the turkeys. I recently saw a book and through research, it showed that we actually become the average of the five people who are closest to us. We become the average of their character and their experience and their way of living of the five people that are closest to us. Have a think for a moment. Who are the five people that have the greatest influence on your life? And how are they helping you in becoming a devoted follower of Jesus? Are they spirit-filled? Are they in the word? Are they connected to spiritual family? Are they faithful in the things of God? We'll become the average of those that we surround ourselves with. Listen to what the book of Proverbs says. Proverbs 13, 
Verse 20 from the message paraphrase. Become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Have you got that? Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. But become wise by walking with the wise. Now, how do you hang out with wise people at these times of social distancing? Well, think distant socializing. Hi, you join an online life group. You buddy up with somebody in your life group. You call each other. You pray for each other daily. You do video chat. There are ways at this time when the church is scattered rather than gathered. You know, at 8 a.m., Every week, every day of the week on the Living Hope Facebook page, we have 10 minutes of family devotions. There are many other people who are sold out for Jesus, watching and engaging with those. And it's so important to engage with others. I have a friend and uh, who contacted me I hadn't heard in a long time. And I just mentioned this person's name over the uh, Facebook live stream. And they said, you know what, it is so nice for somebody to say your name. Just a little thing like that. When God created the heavens and the earth in six days, when he looked at his creation, there was only one thing he said it wasn't good. It wasn't good for man to be alone. Don't do life alone. Maximize getting connected with life-giving followers of Jesus. Hey, we're almost finished. But this is a great word to apply so we can live at peace in troubled times. Lastly, maximize time with Jesus in prayer. When the disciples saw the type of life that Jesus lived and they said to themselves and one another, I want a life like that. I want to be able to sleep during the storms. I want to be able to calm the winds and the waves. You know, I want to be able to hear the Father's voice. They said that Jesus teaches your secrets. Well, they didn't say that. They said, they knew the secret. They said, teaches to what? Pray. Pray. The largest radio receiver on the earth is in New Mexico. Pilots call it the Mushroom Patch. Its real name is Very Large Array, or VLA. And the VLA is a huge series of satellite discs on 38 miles of railway. It is massive. And together, the satellite discs mimic a single telescope, get this, the size of Washington. And astronomers come from all over the world to New Mexico to analyze the optical images of the heavens composed by the VLA from the radio signals that it hears from space. Now, why is such giant apparatus needed? Well, because the radio waves, which are often emitted from sources millions of miles away, are very, very faint. The total amount of energy ever recorded of these radio waves, however, only equals barely the force of a single snowflake ever hitting the ground. Yeah. You know, people will go to fantastic lengths for a faint message from outer space. But the truth is that God is communicating with us every single day. And we can communicate to him through prayer. We need to maximize prayer because prayer changes everything. The disciples after the death of Jesus had well, they had been on lockdown. They were locked down in the upper room. They had closed the doors for fear of their fellow countrymen. They were hidden away. They were, they were isolated. But they were continually in prayer. And as they prayed, everything changed and the Holy Spirit came upon them in power. Jesus had previously taught them to get alone, to pray to seek the Father. That's what you and I need to do personally every day. Jesus says, go into your homes. That's what we're doing at the moment. Close the door. That's what we're doing at the moment. And pray to your Father who is in secret. And he will reward you publicly. 
We need to maximize prayer. Now, what happens when we pray? Listen to this wonderful passage from the book of Philippians. Paul writes to the church in Philippi, chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, from the message paraphrase. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayer, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. You see, when we pray, a divine exchange occurs. We come before God through Jesus Christ, what he has done for us on the cross. And we give him all of our burdens. Elsewhere, the Bible says, cast your burdens on the Lord for he cares for you. We give him all of our burdens, all of our concerns. And then a divine exchange occurs. God takes our burdens and he gives us his peace, which passes all understanding. What burdens, concerns, worries, or stresses do you have today? Even as I'm speaking, why don't you raise them to God? Speak them not only out, but up to him through Christ. And then receive, receive his peace in your homes today. The disciples' lives were transformed because of a transformed prayer life. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. My goodness, the pressure was on the disciples. They were up in front of the legal judiciary. And in Acts 4 and verse 13, this is what was said of them. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. And they recognized what they had been with Jesus. People were astonished. People will be astonished by your life and your testimony because you spend time with Jesus in prayer in your home, in the secret place. Every morning, get alone with Jesus. Find a solitary place in your house or your garden. Get your Bible, notebook, everything you need. Leave your phone at home. Have a submissive spirit. Pray. Don't make it a one-way conversation between you and God. Listen. What impressions does God put in your mind? As you read the scriptures as well, what does God say to you through his word? Don't have any distractions. Close the door, Jesus actually says. And pray to your Father who is unseen, but who will be with you by the Spirit. Those final days and hours for the disciples as the cross loomed ahead of Jesus were troubling times. Jesus spoke directly to their troubled hearts. And in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 27, he said to them, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You know, today, if you are not yet a devoted follower of Jesus, did you know that today you could make that decision to follow him and like his first followers, experience a supernatural peace, a peace the world can't even give. I mean, the world's peace is temporary. You know, it's pills and it's alcohol and it's, or it's go to this farm place or get this amount of money. But all those temporary things have gone at the moment, except maybe for our homes. But Jesus says, I give you a peace that the world can't give. And it's as we become his followers that he imparts that peace to us. How do you become his followers? What religion do you need to join? What system of philosophy? Well, it's not anything like that. Jesus says, I am the way. You see, the way has become a man. 
That's what we need to do today. We need to follow the way. How do we start that relationship? Well, he lived the perfect life that you and I could never have lived. He lived a sinless, spotless life. You see, the Bible says that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. That includes me. That includes you. I mean, it's not even the fact that I've broken the Ten Commandments. It is, but I haven't lived a perfect life. All have sinned, but he lived a perfect life for me and for you. Secondly, he died the sinner's death on the cross for me and for you. That's how we become his followers, by recognizing that we're sinners and he died in our place. The Bible in the book of Romans says the wages of sin is death. It's separation eternally from God. I don't want to be separated from him in, in life and eternity. And so when we repent of our sins, we say, God, sorry, failed. I haven't lived a perfect life. When we repent of our sins, when we put our faith in the work of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection, when we come before God in that way and lay down our lives for him, he promises to forgive us, to reconcile us to the Father, to give us the gift of his Holy Spirit, to forgive us, to give us the free gift of eternal life through Jesus. Are you a follower of Jesus? Do you want to receive his peace in these troubled times? Do you want to live at peace regardless of what the circumstances are? Well, here's a way to start, just to start to help you today. Why don't you echo this prayer in your heart, which picks up just what I have shared with you by turning from our sins, by putting our faith in God, by receiving forgiveness Spirit, will you pray for me, with me, and receive Christ today and begin to follow him? Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for your great love for me, a sinner. I realize that I've sinned in word and thought and deed, that I deserve to be separated from you forever. I repent of my sins. I turn from my sins. And I thank you that on the cross, Jesus took the punishment for my sins, all my sins. And I thank you that on the third day, he rose again. And now I give my life to you. I surrender my life to you. And I ask that you would forgive me that you would cleanse me, that you would make me a new person, that you would come into my heart by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for the free gift of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or even as a recommitment, why don't you let your pastor, life group leader, or even us, no, you can email us or Facebook message us and we'd love to help you become a fully devoted follower of Jesus. And I just want to pray for everyone there that we would maximize today, maximize our worship and maximize feeding on the scriptures and maximize being connected to life-giving people and maximize praying to Jesus. Let me just pray for all of us today. Thank you for this word, Lord God, today. Thank you you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but one of love and power and a sound mind. But like Jesus, we want to position ourselves to receive your peace, which passes all understanding. Yes. So would you help us daily that our households, that our lives, that our lips would be filled with praise and worship, that we would experience your manifest presence daily. Lord, that your word would be life and health to us. As we feed on your word, our minds would be renewed and we would sense your peace overwhelming us, regardless of the circumstances. And Lord, some of us are introverts, and so help us connect to life-giving people. 
Your word says that those who want to have friends, let them show themselves friendly. Yeah, we're going to make the first step. We ask you to fill us with your spirit and boldness to reach out to others, to connect with others, with those who will be purifiers rather than polluters, but those who will take us to the balcony and give us the perspective of the, of the heavens on the situations of life rather than those who will take us to the basement. Yeah. Would you come help us live for you? Help us abide in you. Help us to be devoted to the fellowship as well. Help us to be a people of prayer. To be on our knees to hear your voice daily. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here's what Paul, an apostle, says in Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope.